and welcome to my video blog where I'm working my way through the 5 to your life program. It's a part-time plan to help you feel happier and healthier by making small changes on just two days a week. This is week two when we're going to look at how to connect more with the people and places around us. Each week we start with a quick check-in to find out how we've done since the last 5 to day. Now I've been using uh, my kitchen timer to work in short bursts of about 25 minutes and it's really helping, especially with a new writing project I'm doing that I'm really excited about. Let's talk about happiness. It's what we all want and 5 to Your Life has lots of facts about how and where to find it. Like the fact that the happiest country in the world is apparently Costa Rica. So I thought, must be about having a warm climate. But actually, the other four countries in the top five are in the furthest part of Northern Europe, where sunshine can be in short supply. What is more useful for those of us who can't just move wherever we want in the world is a list of things that the happiest people tend to do. So, for example, being active and at work and at home tends to make you happy. Drinking alcohol can make you happy, but not too much. And finally, having close friends. The number of friends doesn't matter. It's definitely quality rather than quantity. So our first activity this week is about reaching out. And if it sounds daunting, don't worry, I'm not about to send you out into the street to talk to strangers. The activities are all enjoyable. Uh, there are four different things you can try. And this week, I'm just going to try sitting down to dinner twice with my partner instead of us both eating supper on a tray in front of the telly. Small changes can make a really big difference in how we connect to other people. I talked a bit about connecting with people, but pets can play a big role in our happiness as well. Now, this is Izzy. She is a bit camera shy, um, but she's brought so much fun into our lives since we adopted her from the RSPCA almost two years ago. Pets make you feel good, can't they? And studies have shown they can have really big positive effects on your health, from reducing the number of medical appointments you need to cutting signs of depression. Our challenge this week is about doing something that makes you feel good. It needn't be complicated. There are four options, again, and they're all based on strong evidence about what makes us happy. It could be planting something or trying the good things diary. And that is as simple as listing three things each day that you're grateful for or that have given you pleasure. It could be looking at a rainbow outside or it could be a great cup of coffee. You'd be amazed at the difference it can make to go out of your way to notice what makes you happy. What about if you're really struggling to find even three good things to say about your day? Suffering a bit from a low mood can help motivate you to make changes, but if you're feeling bad a lot of the time over an extended period, seek professional help. I've suffered depression myself. I know it can be really hard to make a change, but it's what your doctor's there for. And there are lots of self-help options that can run alongside professional help. For example, today's optional activity is expressive writing. That is a simple tool that can have very powerful effects on raising your mood. If you've only got time to try one thing from today, then I really recommend The Good Things Diary. And if you want to read more, you can download a sample of Five to Your Life from Amazon. You can go to our website or join our Facebook group. And I hope to see you next time when I'll be explaining how making the effort to love where you live can change your whole outlook.